Hello, and welcome to part three of our three-part Chalk Talk series with Triad Semiconductor. Before we jump into the fray here, let's do a quick recap. Part one, we learned how to save 75% on our next mixed signal chip design using Triad Semiconductors via ASIC. We were impressed. Yay, we said. And in fact, then we started saying, hey, we want more. Part two, we kicked it up to 11 and learned how we can save up to 99% on our next mixed signal chip design. That was even more awesome. But then we had a question. What kind of things can we design with this process? How does it work? Can you give us an example? That brings us to part three. We heard your voice, and here comes your example. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and today my guest is Reed Winder from Triad Semiconductor. Reed is going to walk us through the design of a Sigma Delta mixer using Triad Semiconductors via designer. I'm not sure I know what a Sigma Delta mixer is, other than maybe something that involves a sorority, but this should be fun anyway. Let's get rolling. And remember, before we get started, go ahead and click that More Information link below your player. There you can register for a special VIA Designer discount. Welcome, Reed. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, Amelia, thanks for having me here. I'm really excited to get to speak with you today. So before we jump into Sigma Delta, which I have learned is in fact not a sorority mixer, we're going to be attacking this with VIA Designer. Tell us a little bit about what VIA Designer is. We think everyone should have the right to be their own mixed signal IC designer. Our vision is you should be able to create your own configurable mixed signal chips affordably. Our goal we want to reduce the cost of mixed signal IC development by 99%. Wow, okay. You can make PC board designs cost effectively. Our vision is that with VIA Designer and our VIA ASIC technology, you could make your own mixed signal IC as inexpensively as you can make a PC board solution. All right, so let's dive down a little bit and tell us what's inside VIA Designer. Typically, when an analog designer thinks of a design environment, they have a schematic capture set up with a spy simulation and they can do analog only simulation. Uh -huh. That's really what everyone thinks of as analog design. Sure. But there's a lot more to it for the really interesting designs that are in the world today. We see most designs have analog, digital, mixed signal combined, and even software. Via Designer is not just the schematic capture, spice, and analog simulation, but also Verilog, VHDL, and digital simulation. And then we combine the two together to support mixed signal simulation, VHDL AMS modeling, and we have this really interesting concept of design wizards to help accelerate analog design. All right, Reed, let's throw a problem at VIA Designer. Tell us what kind of example we will be using. Well, we're going to start out with a pretty straightforward, maybe even a simple example today, but we're going to mix together three analog waveforms, three sine waves, and come up with a sum together or a mixed composite waveform. Okay, that gives me some flashback to Analog 101 and some unauthorized projects in the dorms involving power amplifiers, but we won't talk about that. Um, is this going to involve some op amps, right? That's a classic way to solve the problem. If we were to take a look, you could take the three sine waves in, run them through an inverting summing amplifier, and then take that inverted output, run it back through an inverting op amp, and voila! we have the summation or the mixing of those three analog waveforms. Okay, so what is this thing gonna do? Well, if we look in the time domain and ran the simulation, we'd see our sine wave one, two, and three, and then at the bottom of the waveform, we see the summation of those three sine waves, or it's a mixed analog waveform. Okay, Reed, this will bring us all the way back up to about 1995, <laughs> but that's not what we're going to be doing today, right? Exactly. All the really interesting design projects you see out there involve analog, digital, mixed signal design. I want to show you a different way, a bit of a Rube Goldberg way to solve this problem, but it'll really give you a feel for the power of what's inside VIA Designer from a design environment. Okay. We're going to do a Sigma Delta mixer. And you're right, it's a little dangerous to Google that and see at the pictures that come up. But a Sigma <laughs> Delta mixer is where we're going to digitize each of the three analog waveforms, run them through a digital 
summation circuit back out through a handcrafted mixed signal analog to digital converter and then we're going to smooth the output waveform using a continuous time analog filter to generate our summation output. Okay, so Reed, I've never actually designed one of these. Are we stuck here? Oh no, this is going to be fun. Trust me, it's going to be safe and fun. And in fact, I think you're going to leave this experience feeling like you are a VIA designer. Sweet, okay. So let's start out by designing a Sigma Delta A to D converter. Okay. Really? Yes, really, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be an IC designer to design a Sigma Delta A to D converter inside VIA Designer. In fact, what you do is you instantiate a wizard. Okay, what's a wizard? Well, a wizard is where we take the full custom design expertise of our IC designers and encapsulate that into a tool that will do the hard work for you. Let me show you. Here we're gonna, we've instantiated Sigma Delta A to D instance, we're going to run the wizard. Okay. And now once I'm inside the wizard, it starts asking me questions about the design. What's going to be my clock frequency? What's my signal of bandwidth of interest that I'm looking for? I can get data sheet information about the part. Here I'm going to change the signal bandwidth. And when I do, that actually causes the low level design parameters to change, the capacitances, etc. within the design. If I want to, I can then go in and change the converter from being a decimation rate of 1 to a decimation rate of 1024 or more, and then I can get a 16-bit output A to D converter or all the way up to a 24-bit A to D converter. But today we're going to look at a 1-bit output stream because we're going to do some 1-bit serial math later in this design. So now I've created a Sigma Delta A to D converter just by going through this process. Okay, and are we going to test the circuit now? So it's ready for a spice simulation, right? I think it's about time to go get some voodoo donuts. <laughs> well, Amelia, we don't have to run spice. In fact, we get to run VHDL AMS simulations on this. If we were going to run a spice simulation on this design, it could easily take a day and a half if we didn't get a core dump on my PC here. Right. <laughs> but what I will do is we launch a VHDL AMS simulation. It can be done in as little as... 30 seconds on this type of a design. I'm in the waveform viewer. I'm pulling up my AVDD and AVSS signals. There's my positive and negative voltage reference and my common mode voltages. And then my input waveform is going to be swinging between these positive and negative references. The output signal of the Sigma Delta modulator is a single one bit bit stream representing that analog waveform in digital format. See where the analog signal is close to the positive reference, it's mostly ones in the output. When the analog signal is near the negative reference, it's mostly zeros in the digital output. And when it's in the transition in between, it's switching back and forth. Hey, Amelia, you've just created a one-bit A to D converter. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly how I would have done it. Sure. The next thing we need to do is then just go in and step and repeat the design of those Sigma Delta A to D converters so we have an A to D converter committed to each of our analog input signals. What we'll have is we'll have a digital output stream representing the one bit serial stream for each of the A to D converters and we can sum those together. Okay Reed, and like you said, we're going to combine these together? Yes, and now that we have our waveforms in the digital domain, combining them together is simply running them through a one-bit arithmetic function or a summing function. The output of each Sigma Delta modulator can then be added with the others and we'll have created our combined mixed bit stream. Okay, so when it comes to mixed signal design, there are a lot of different kinds of engineers. Are we forcing the analog guys to work in Verilog? Are we forcing the digital guys to work in schematics? What are my options here? Via Designer is all about freedom. You can do it the way you want to. Great. It supports VHDL, text entry, Verilog, or any combination of those, or you can do all of your digital design and schematic only. Wow, okay. So, Reed, have you seen The Hobbit? Uh, you've been talking a lot about wizards here. What are these wizards you speak of? Well, I've actually told my son I wouldn't see it till I got back in town. No, okay. <laughs> wizards are a great way to simplify and accelerate the design process. Okay. You don't have to know the low-level details of how to design a Sigma Delta A to D converter, or a low-pass filter for that matter, or how to make your own linear regulator, or a programmable gain amplifier. 
what we do is we take full custom mix signal IC know-how and encapsulate it inside this wizard process so if you can specify the transfer function you're looking for out of these wizards we'll do the heavy lifting and create models and implementations of the design without you having to. Okay, so Reed, show me another wizard. What if I'm designing something complex like a low pass filter? Well, in this design, that's exactly what we need to do is take the output of our DAC and run it through a filter to smooth the output. So if we'll look here at the execution of a filter wizard, we click on the instance in the design, run the wizard, and then inside the wizard form, we can select a lot of parameters about the implementation. In fact, I can plot the transfer function and say, mm, does it look close to the kind of performance I'm wanting? Or I can go in and change from a Butterworth to an elliptical or other type of filter. I can look at that transfer function and say, eh, maybe that's close to what I need. And then I say, well, maybe I really want to change the design and I need much better performance. So I change the order of the filter to ninth order. Mm -hmm. uh, don't do that. <laughs> okay. What we do inside Wizards is we give you feedback of when you've done something that's unrealizable in a real chip. Ah, okay. It's a safety net. We want to teach you how to be good via ASIC designers inside via designer. So you go back through and then change it to the kind of performance we're looking for of a low pass filter with a center frequency of 4800 hertz. Go through and now we can push down inside the design and, and we've actually created a VHDL AMS model that represents all the functionality of the circuit along with including the process, voltage, and temperature variations of the design so you can see how this chip would work in a real environment in the real world. Okay, so one problem I've seen with approaches like this in the past is, is that it can be a little bit limiting because you can only build things with the blocks that exist. Exactly. We want to give you wizards to accelerate the design process where maybe you don't know or you don't care about the exact details of that part of the circuit. But when you really care, when you want to get down to bare metal, we give you the ability to go in and do as low a level design as you would like to. So let's take a look at the design of a DAC that we do by hand. Sure, okay. What we think of a DAC is, you know, this high level symbol with digital in and analog out. Sure. But a real DAC includes a reference generator to generate the voltages that control the DAC along with a precision voltage reference to act as the ultimate reference for digital to analog conversion. We need latches, voltage switching, etc. If you want to do all of that by hand inside Via Designer, we give you that freedom. All right, Reed, this doesn't exactly look like the output we had earlier. This seems uh, strangely noisy. Is this an Etch-a-Sketch version of the output? Well, this is our signal, in fact. Okay. We have the sine waves are there. They're hiding in some high frequency noise. Maybe it's a little hard to see it here on the time domain, but if we switch over to the frequency domain, we see that our sine waves are still there on the left hand side with the peaks shown, but the big noise floor we see rolling up to the right is the noise shaping that has occurred through the sigma delta modulation process. Ah, uh, okay. So Reed, I was kind of worried that filter wasn't going to be good enough, but I can see what's going on here. By moving the noise to such a high frequency, I can get by with a pretty grungy filter, right? Exactly. That's one of the beauties of a Sigma Delta modulator. We do the hard work inside the modulator and relax the requirements on the analog filter. In fact, take a look at the output of the analog filter. We now see that our waveform is indeed looks like the summation of the three analog signals without that high frequency noise in it. We've gotten rid of our Etch-a-Sketch looking waveform and we're back to a, a shapely pretty sine wave. Mm -hmm. Then if we were to look at that signal in the frequency domain, we'd see that we've gotten even rid of our high frequency noise at the output of the filter. The noise is down 120 dB and all we see are the nice peaks of our sine waves with the different frequencies of interest. So, Amelia, I'm glad we've gone through this introduction. I've got a lot more detail here that I think I can walk you through to give you a more thorough understanding of Via Designer so that you really get it. That, Reed, that's really okay. I, I think you can stop now. I, I think you're killing me with PowerPoint. No, no, here. I've got <laughs> 78 more slides that we can walk through here. No, no, Amelia. really, I'm ready to get started. Um, where can I go for more information? Well, thanks so much for joining me. I think that's all I have time for today. Amelia, are you sure I have, I have a lot more PowerPoint to go through? Yes, no. really. Read the doors on your left. Thanks.
And before we go, don't forget to click those links below your player. There you can visit part one and part two of this Chalk Talk series and register for a VIA designer discount. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com.